Hello learners, now I'd like to tell about the summary of this drama Hamlet in a very brief way because in an elaborate way it is not possible particularly in virtual class to tell in a very elaborate way because we have got a certain kind of time span due to the technological limitation. Now the summary is like this, Prince Hamlet you know that he is the Prince of Denmark the son of King Hamlet and Queen Retrot. While he was reading in the University of Wittenberg as a student, he came to know the death of his father and he was summoned to the palace, Denmark, the palace of Denmark, and he returned from Wittenberg and to attend the funeral of his father. The thing is that he was very much shocked at the death of his father when he arrived in the capital, Denmark, particularly in the palace, King Hamlet started becoming very suspicious about the normal death of his father. Because the situation and environment of the palace was not conducive enough exactly for Hamlet to accept the death of his father as a normal death. All these things, all the environment clearly indicated one thing. The death of King Hamlet was not the normal at all. So with a suspicious mind, he started searching the real cause of his father. Very important thing is that the shocking attitude exactly drived him very much. And that is why he started searching about the death of his father. Another thing which provoked him to be suspicious, that is the sudden marriage of her mother to his uncle to his uncle Claudius. Her mother Gertrude promptly, without any delay, married his uncle Claudius. This hasty marriage exactly could not be considered as a normal thing, which created a certain kind of doubt in the mind of Hamlet about the normal death of his father. And the marriage was not supported by Prince Hamlet because it is an incest marriage, very foul one, which could not be accepted by Prince Hamlet at all. When he uh, uh, came to uh, the palace he, uh, and searching the cause of the death of his uh, father, Horatio reported that the ghost of the deceased king, king appeared and it was reported the ghost to Horatio that the death was not the normal death. It was the conspiracy, design of conspiracy by Claudius and which was also participated his mother Gertrude to kill his father. And it was also reported that when the deceased king one day was sleeping in the garden, the poison exactly was poured in the ear by Claudius and it was the only cause of his father, King Hamlet. And Prince Hamlet became very, very shocked. He was seriously shocked. He was not mentally prepared to accept this sort of death at all. And that is why he, he took a fall to take the revenge. And how he could take the revenge, it is a question. He started taking the helps in different capacities so that he could take the revenge on the death of his father. And Horatio in different capacities started giving him cooperation and help so that Hamlet could exactly continue the mission of taking revenge on the death of his father, particularly against Claudius. But thing is that Hamlet's character is a very contemplating character. He has got a certain kind of philosophic mind. If we analyze the character, if we go to the analyze, analysis of the character of Hamlet, we will see one thing, that Hamlet is, Hamlet likes to do, uh, likes to contemplate than doing work. And that is why spirit inspiration was very necessary to stimulate Hamlet exactly to take the revenge on the death of his father. And the appearance of the ghost played a very important role to expedite the spirit of Hamlet to take the revenge. One night exactly, Hamlet, uh, sorry, Prince Hamlet's ghost, that means spirit of Hamlet, 
uh, Bur King Hamlet appeared and started talking. Uh, for the first, I'd like to tell one thing that because of the qualification, university qualification and competence exactly of Horatio, Horatio was appointed by other characters, especially Hamlet, to negotiate with the ghost. When Horatio negotiated with the ghost, the ghost expressed his desire to, uh, uh, to talk to Hamlet. And Horatio exactly managed uh, a certain kind of meeting between Hamlet and the ghost, the spirit, the Holy Spirit of King Hamlet. And when it was the first meeting, it took place between Prince Hamlet and King Hamlet, you know, uh, King Hamlet, it was uh, uh, for the first time, all the characters, Horatio as well as Hamlet, was very much frightened, apprehended. But when it was uh, exactly proved that the existence of the go ghost was true, a fact, it is not the spirit of the devil uh, exactly used by uh, Claudius. The, uh, Horatio started believing. Uh, uh, also, Prince Hamlet also believing in the existence of the ghost. The ghost directed, directed especially Hamlet to take the revenge, particularly on King Claudius, not on his mother, Queen Betrothed. The avenge or the revenge of his mother as he was directed and advised by ghost was left to the heaven and the ghost advised Prince Hamlet exactly that the heaven would take the decision about the destiny or the destination of the soul of his mother. Uh, King Hamlet uh, uh, did not permit Prince Hamlet to take the revenge on his mother. And by the spirit, exactly, the Prince Hamlet received from, from the appearance of the ghost or the advice and the directives from the ghost to him, he started taking revenge. One day, Prince Hamlet found a golden opportunity to take the revenge. Claudius was praying to God in his private chapel within the palace arena. It was a golden chance to take the revenge. When Prince Hamlet was taking mental preparation to take the revenge on Claudius, he was co contemplated by another thinking. He was obsessed with another thinking. And another philosophy developed in his mind that if, uh, that if King Claudius uh, is being killed, particularly in the time of prayer, he might not be sent to the hell. He might be awarded by God, heaven. So if a criminal is allowed to go to the heaven, this will not be the real punishment for a criminal like Claudius. And that is why King Hamlet abstained himself from this sort of killing, you know. But, uh, but uh, King, uh, Claudius ended praying. When he woke up from the prayer, you know, King Hamlet was obsessed with another thinking. That is another kind of philosophy that whether hell or heaven is existent, nobody can give the proper evidence because nobody has written from the land of death to report the existence of hell and heaven. It was a confusing attitude, a kind of scepticism. And you know that this is one of the characteristics of the Renaissance period. You know that Renaissance was going on in Europe. Renaissance is based on logic. Ren uh, Renaissance, exactly the spirit of Renaissance does not allow any individual to believe in darkness, believe in non-existence. Renaissance, the spirit, spirit of Renaissance always provokes in any individual to believe uh, on the basis of logic, on the basis of existence. And King Ham uh, Prince Hamlet being the university a uh, student or univer having the university education is uh, uh, is obsessed with the kind of learning from Renaissance and that is why he was confused and he started feeling that he had missed a golden opportunity to take the revenge on Claudius while he was praying to God. And you know that uh, Claudius was very clever, very cunning. He came to know one thing that Hamlet started understanding 
the real cause of the death of his father and that is why you know that he was taking a certain kind of opportunity exactly to take uh, uh, action on hamlet that means he was also making a plot against hamlet to kill him you know that on the death of his father it was the legal heir of ascending the throne or uh, to occupy the throne of denmark and it is prince hamlet but claudius has been ascended the throne in the uh, as, as hamlet was not in respect of age to be qualified to be the king and if hamlet would be alive ha prince hamlet would be qualified legally exactly to be ascended to the throne of denmark and that is why king claudius was taking an opportunity to a uh, kill prince hamlet when hamlet killed polonius during uh, uh, during his spying on hamlet in the private room of his mother uh, he uh, claudius uh, took an opportunity claudius accused hamlet to be a murderer of polonius and he imposed punishment punishment is that hamlet is ordered to be deported in england and not only that uh, king claudius appointed two persons who were the fellow students or the fellow classmates of prince hamlet in wittenberg university and their lindenstern and rosen clans they have been appointed as a spy as a spy on king uh, prince hamlet and not only that this two spies lindenstern and rosen clans have been directed by claudius exactly to uh, produce prince hamlet to the uh, to the custody of the king of england to be executed but prince hamlet could understand it very perfectly and that is why he was seeking an opportunity to kill his schoolmates university mates lindenstern and rosen clans whenever prince hamlet took the opportunity that he he killed two lindenstern and rosen clans you know and prince hamlet was saved from the conspiracy designed against him by his uncle king claudius and these are going on a chat and retaliating attack conspiracy against conspiracy these were the pictures of these were the pictures of the palace of denmark you know and hamlet was bewildered and it was the only character that is horatio horatio was is given the proper guide to hamlet prince hamlet so that he could continue or he could be a stable man to take the revenge of his father by this time beatrice the son of polonius came to know the death of his father he returned from france and he was seeking an opportunity to kill uh, to, to kill prince hamlet and he took the opportunity when a uh, duel fighting taken place between him and prince hamlet you know that the tragic death had been faced both of them these were the characters you know in this play you will find the piles of dead dead bodies the series of deaths and taking revenge etc etc you know that this drama or the play hamlet is totally endowed with the quality of taking revenge which exactly endowed with the spirit of medieval age it was the spirit of medieval age to take the revenge death for death exactly this is the strategy or this is the sentiment which was uh, exactly was motivating people's mind during the medieval period and i think that shakespeare was not exactly apart from this sort of sentiment you know that hamlet the play hamlet is the real tragedy shakespeare has ever written shakespeare has written 37 plays i think that hamlet is the most important drama which is exactly reflected the real tragedy of human life tragedy exactly taking revenge 
you know that taking revenge on the relatives, you know, even King Claudius, exactly, conspiracy, you know, King Claudius even killed his brother, his elder brother, whom he loved very much, King Hamlet. It is a conspiracy. The conspiracy even being plotted by a brother against another brother. Conspiracy can be plotted by uncle against nephew. Conspiracy even can be plotted against father. The mother can plot against exactly her husband, the father of her children. These are the pictures which is full of horror, full of abhorrence, full of hatreds and Shakespeare exactly has reflected a certain kind of medieval sentiment also as well as the universal psychology of human being. You know that human characters are not above exactly above hatreds, above the spirit of about the spirit of taking revenge, above abhorrence, etc., which have been reflected in different characters in different ways in different actions and different capacities. I think that Shakespeare, in spite of being, exactly, in spite of uh, being an expert to take, exactly, the sentiment of the medieval age, his expertise depends on his strategy, that he is a dramatist in the world who has been placed in a particular ample place which cannot be touched by any other writer in every, in any capacity is in any way to exactly reflect the human characters with medieval sentiment as well as modern sentiment. That Shakespeare is an architect exactly to create the characters in a universal appeal, universal sentiment, universal ideology. And it is very important for you. Dear learners, I think that you will be able to make any sort of questions and answer it in your examinations, in university examinations, either in the public universities or, a, or in the private universities. You will be equally competent to make the questions any time exactly, to place it in the examination papers. And before concluding, I would like to tell something about the present situation of the world due to COVID-19, you know that. Uh, when the winter is very impending, it is knocking at the door. At the appearance of the winter, we see the increasing tendency of COVID-19. I'd like to give you a certain kind of advice, dear learners, not to move frequently here and there, very unnecessarily. Without any necessary, you, you should not go out. Exactly. You should save yourself. You should guard yourself. I think that you are rational and logical enough you know it very well how to move to face this sort of crucial moment. I would like to thank my colleagues, the management of our university college, especially Principal Sayyid Zafar Ali, who is giving us continuous support, continuous support in a very spontaneous way so that we can continue our lesson programs very smoothly. In the next class, I will come with another topic and then, till then, Allah Hafiz. Stay safe. Thank you very much.